bad, you guys. My allergies are out of this world today. Ugh, spring needs to get its life together. Hello, my dears, and welcome back to my corner of the internet. Today, I've got another book talk video for you guys. Sorry if I'm sounding a little congested here today. It's just my allergies are bad. I always forget how bad my spring allergies do get until spring rolls back around, and then I'm like, oh yeah, this is why I hate spring. But today we are talking about Big Little Lies by Liam Moriarty. This book is so good. It's currently also a mini-series on HBO. It's a seven-episode series, which is coming to an end on Sunday. And um, that's actually where I first heard of the book. I hadn't heard of it before then. Uh, the series is starring Reese Witherspoon, Nicole Kidman, and Alexander Skarsgård, which, I mean, that there is enough to make you want to watch it. Um, so after I watched a few episodes, I was in Walmart one day and saw that they had the book. So I grabbed it. Um, I waited a little while before I started reading it because I wanted to um, just kind of watch the show for a bit before. And um, then I kind of wanted to have the book review airing the same week as the final episode. This book is such a quick read. It's 400 and I think 86 pages, but um, it, it doesn't feel that long. It goes by so quickly. It keeps you up at night. And at the same time, it's an easy read. So, you know, it's not, it's nothing too intense uh, in that way. Although the subject matter gets pretty dark at times. So I'll just tell you a bit about what is happening in the book. I won't give any spoilers away because I know the, uh, the series finale is coming up. And I'm very excited to see if they end the same way. So, <clears throat> it is about three moms. Um, there's Madeline, she is uh, married to Ed, and she has three children, Abigail, Chloe, and Fred. Um, Abigail she has with um, her ex-husband, and he also lives in town with his new wife, Bonnie, and their daughter, Skye. So now Skye and Chloe are both starting kindergarten this year. Then there's Celeste. She is um, beautiful. She's otherworldly beautiful. Um, but she's the kind of woman that's very naturally beautiful and like like she doesn't realize and if if you say anything to her about it she's very embarrassed and she's married to this man named Perry and he is uh, very very wealthy and together they have twin boys who are starting kindergarten this year and then there's Jane and Jane has a son named Ziggy and Jane is not with Ziggy's father. She's, he doesn't know anything about his father. All that she knows is that he was a one night stand that ended up um, being violent and abusive verbally. And then she never saw him again. And Ziggy, of course, is starting kindergarten this year. So the book starts off and we know that there's been a murder. And we know that there's a good chance that one of these people I've just mentioned is the one who was killed. But we don't know who yet. So the book kind of goes from present day with people being interviewed to flashbacks as we get to know these women and their families more. So what, what we're all building up to is a trivia night at the school. Um, it's an Elvis and um, Audrey party where all the men have to come out dressed as Elvis Presley and all the women have to come dressed as Audrey Hepburn. And we know that it's on this night, the trivia night at the school, that someone is killed. So the whole book we're just sort of building up to that night and we're getting to know the sort of ins and outs of these families, these three families. So like with Celeste, she's so beautiful and she seems like she has this perfect life and her husband Perry, he's wealthy, but he's also seems so perfect and they're, 
even though they've been together for so long, they're still so passionate and people look on that relationship and they feel jealous, of course. But what they don't know is that at home, Perry has a very, very short fuse. And um, Celeste is being abused um, physically. And it gets a little even more twisted in that that seems it seems to the violence seems to weave into their sex life and um, it just kind of becomes this really sick sort of dynamic that they forge for each other. And then with Jane, there is so much hurt and so much pain about what happened that led to Ziggy being conceived. And so the first day of kindergarten finally does roll around. And on that first day, when the kids all come out after class, um, one of the little girls, who also has a fairly big part in this story, um, she has been hurt at school. She was choked by one of the little boys. And um, she's asked by the teacher to point out in front of everybody the little boy that did it. And she points to Ziggy, which creates this whole ordeal that runs entirely through the book until we find out what happens. Um, because at the time, Ziggy is adamant that he did not do it. And all signs point to that it wasn't him that did it because he's such a sweet, loving little boy. Jane even takes him for counseling to see if a therapist thinks that there's a chance that Ziggy's a bully and the therapist is like, you know, no, like he doesn't have any of the traits of a bully. And then that little girl gets hurt more. She gets bit. She gets, you know, there's just all these things happening to her and she stops naming Ziggy, but her mom is just livid as you would be and she wants to get to the bottom of it and so because her daughter had pointed out Ziggy at the beginning she just kind of takes it upon herself to have this sort of one woman crusade to get Ziggy out of the school and just gone even though at this point Ziggy and this little girl in class are quite good friends so there's there's that mystery who's hurting this child and all the while we're leading up to who who of these people end up murdered. And it's just, it's such a great story. And then there's Madeline, who um, Reese Witherspoon plays her in the series. She's, you know, she's got her husband and her kids and then her ex-husband. And he's recently moved back into the area. And she is livid because she sees him being such a good dad and husband to his new wife and daughter. When, when her daughter was young, all she wanted was for him to step up and be a father. And he wouldn't or couldn't. Um, so now she's just, she doesn't want to see it. She doesn't, she, doesn't, she just doesn't want to see it. And so there's conflict there. And it's just so, so good. And we don't know who anyone, like, who anything is, <laughs> who anything is, what anything is until the very end. Like the last 50 pages or so, it just really kicks off. But even leading up to that, the, you know, 430 pages before that, it's so good. And it's the kind of book where you wish you could, like once I was done, I wished I could forget it so that I could read it again. I loved this world. I loved these people. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And you can pick this book up on Amazon or at your local Walmart. We still have them um, for not a ton of money. So if you, if this sounds interesting, I would definitely recommend giving it a go. Just noticed here on the front, Stephen King gave a little blurb review and it says, a hell of a good book, funny and scary. And I would say that's very accurate because despite the honest and kind of raw writing, and some of the disturbing subject matter, there are parts in this book where I was laughing out loud. So uh, I guess, you know, it's there's a lot of dark themes like domestic violence is a big one. But at the same time, you know, there's there's a lot of humor in the story. So there you go. Um, 
One of the differences I noticed between the series and the book is the book takes place in Australia. The series takes place in California. Um, what else? And then just little differences. Like in the show, Madeline has two children. Whereas in the book, Madeline has three children. Like, why? <laughs> I never quite understand those little differences. It's like, why? Or like, um, when Celeste and Perry are going out one night in the book, their babysitter is a grandmother. Um, you know, she's older. She's a grandmother of 12. Whereas in the show, she's like, um... 20 something so it's always it's always interesting to see the little details that are different in between series and books or movies and books so but yes I cannot wait to see how they decide to end the show I hope they stick with it because I will say while there are some big differences between the show and the book the scenes that they do keep the same are dead on like they keep it exactly the same so that's pretty cool and now I'm going to announce, <laughs> I am so stuffed up, you guys. Uh, but now I'm going to announce the winner from the book giveaway from last week's book talk video. So <laughs> here I have two copies of The Wonder. Uh, one is mine. Which one's mine? This one's mine. <laughs> and this one's the new one. And through random draw, I have my daughter. I had filmed it, but I can't find the footage. But I put all the names of the people who entered by telling me who their favorite author was or one of their favorite authors because I know it's impossible to pick. Then I had my daughter just randomly pick one out of a bowl. Lost that footage. But the person that she picked was Kelly Roberts. So Kelly, if you are watching this, I'm going to put my email in the description bar down below. Just send me an email uh, with your mailing address and I will put this in the mail to you. What's today? Filming on Thursday. Well, I'll put this in the mail as soon as I get your address. Um, if I haven't heard from her by next Friday, I will pick another winner. So until next time, you guys, I hope you have a great weekend. And I will see you guys on Monday with my March favorites video. Bye, guys.